Self-imposed loads are often the result of wanting to do big things for God, whereby we are recognized. We want to make a good splash to begin with, a good impression so people think well of us all the time. Some of us work very hard to polish our first impressions before others. We want people to notice us. So this becomes a self-imposed load of impressions. I hope I made a good impression. They think well of me or much of me. Another self-imposed load is expectations. I've mentioned this already in terms of burnout. It has a lot to do with expectations, where we want to please people, and so we accept the expectations of others, and they be maybe way above us, but we want to please them. And they can, if we succeed at, at one episode of expectations, we then go on to do the next thing they ask us to do, and the next and the next, and we never want to disappoint them because but we are human and lim limited in strength and intelligence and not perfect, we're going to disappoint them. Or sometimes those expectations are about ourselves, that self-imposed that we've made them. We have such high heavenly expectations of ourselves, we never can meet them. And then we can confuse, as I said, my best with the best. It's good to want to be the best you can be with what God has given you, intellect, physical capacities, workload, and so forth. But if you have to be the best, you're in competition. You might even find yourself to be a little Satan because he wanted to be not just with God or under God, he wanted to be best, the best, better than God himself. And so he tumbled and had a great fall because of his pride. Perfectionism, I've already said it. We will never be perfected in and of ourselves by ourselves, only as God ultimately perfects us and he will. But keep that in mind, you're on earth. Perfection is a good indication to an extent. It's a piece of heaven in our lives where we long for the perfect. But to think that we will do anything perfect for very long is a mistake. Idealism. Idealism can become idolatry. Perhaps we have had an experience that seems so ideal. Maybe you went to a church that you thought was ideal and perfect, and any other church you force upon it. You foister this image of the ideal on other people and, and yourself. And each church is different. There's great variety. Each has its own personality. Beware of idealism, which can be idolatry. Well, God says, lighten up, take off a load, rejoice in essentials. And that was the message in Luke chapter 10 as Jesus sent out the 70. And they returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to him, well, that's nothing. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, Jesus said, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I hope you get the message here. Don't boast about great acts that God might do through you, even the trampling of Satan, but very simply rejoice that you're simply as a child of God written in his book in heaven. That's a constant. Opportunities of ministry may come and go. There will be failures and dis disappointment along the way. But make the solid purpose of joy and result of joy may it be that you're going to be in heaven with him. Here's a historic illustration from the book of Jeremiah. This is what the Lord God of Israel says to you, Barak, who is the scribe of Jeremiah. You said, woe is me, the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am wore out by groaning and find no rest. The Lord said, say to this man, to him, this is what the Lord says, I will overthrow what I have built and uproot what I have planted throughout the land. Should you seek then for yourselves great things, seek them not, for I will bring disaster on all people, declares the Lord. But wherever you go, I will let you escape with your life. Now. What's the point of all this? 
Well, the situation being that Barak, as the scribe of Jeremiah, had written a whole scroll, perhaps the whole book of Jeremiah. He had writer's cramp, no doubt. He had written, and, and it wasn't like he didn't have a computer. It didn't push print and it all came out by hand and very difficult with quill and pen on parchment, hard to write on, taking hours. And he listened to Jeremiah throughout all this. Well, the king took it and before the fire, cut off a slice and threw it in the fire and they read some more, cut it off and disposed of it until the whole thing was gone. And Barak said, well, what, what's my life now? I want to do this great thing by simply recording God's word through the mouth of Jeremiah. And I've got nothing in my life. What's well, a big deal? Well, he would have to re-record the whole thing, laborious and hard work. But the word from the word is, you just simply rejoice that you get to escape. And in the heavenly realm, it may seem that your life has come to nothing. That you can't see any accomplishments from God. Rejoice and that you get to escape hell. You get to go to heaven. Make that be the constant of your joy and your work in Him. There's an eternal example, the best of all. We're told in the book of Philippians from the Apostle Paul, each of you should look not on his own interests, but also on the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Wow. Here's the lesson to be learned in this eternal example. Jesus lived for an audience of one, his Father. He wasn't so interested in what other people thought of him. It's hard to live for many voices, many people, and their expectations. But it's easy if we humble ourselves as Jesus did and listen to one voice, one whose approval is what makes a difference and counts. He listened to his Father. He humbled himself before others. But it would be the Father who would then exalt him. He is our example. The Apostle Paul put it another way, putting these words together in the book of Colossians. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So what is the load that we are to unload? Come unto me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take off the load that all the expectations people are putting on you and you put on yourself. Take rest. You can take your load off, he says. Take it down, take it off. Learn how to rest with me. But then take on my training instrument, the yoke of companionship with me. Focus not so much on your work, but on the presence of God Almighty. That's what is important. Look to him, want his presence, moment by moment, be you resting, playing, or working. And take his presence that you're full of then into your workplace, into your relationships, which may be difficult, and be that instrument of love and peace that he's called you to be after the message and the pattern of Jesus, our Savior. Well, there he is, and there we are. He sees us as simple lambs, and we are to come to him. Come to him, unload our burden, and rest in him. 
We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Lord Jesus, thank you for this invitation to unload our burdens, to unload our sins, to unload the expectations, the misconceptions that we have taken as our belief system or others have put upon us, that you want us to have full rest. And we thank you, O Lord, for showing us how to work under your instrument of peace, companionship with you, learning how to be humble in our values and labor intensely for one voice, one audience, an audience of one, your Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, strengthen us accordingly. Amen.